So here we have an old man wearing a mattress in his underwear. Also known as the future god killer. <laughs> so I just want to go over the build that I'm going to be using this league. Our league starter. This is my holy flame totem Hierophant. And I'm going to show how it's built. As well as what items it's u it uses. And how you it's going to be leveled. So just going to go over the leveling first. We are going to start with this cluster here. It's the main cluster that uh, gives you good damage, good life. It gives you basically whatever you need. Uh, after this point, before you do any of this stuff, you should probably rush Ancestral Bond. I made the mistake in the Flame Surge build of not rushing Ancestral Bond, and that is kind of an issue. So once you grab Avatar of Fire, I think the actual correct answer is to go right up to Ancestral Bond. Then you can deal with things like getting Devotion, Divine Judgment, Tireless, Sovereignty, etc. You'll want to pick up Arcane Capacitor at some point, but it's not that important till later. Grab the Purity of Flesh Wheel, grab Explosive Impact, skip ahead over here. You are going to want to grab uh, Shaman's Dominion and Mental Rapidity first, then the Cruel Preparation. And then you're going to go up here and you're going to grab Heart of Flame with uh, the Flame Mastery that makes it your crits don't inherently ignite. After that point, you'll be grabbing disc the Discord Artisan Wheel and the Firewalker Wheel. You'll be heading all the way back here now that you're going to start having some auras and grabbing Sovereignty. Once you finally get a Staff, you'll want Whirling Barrier, but not before since it's a Staff node. Probably at some point you'll be picking up Sanctum of Thought. Uh, this kind of optional early since if you're going to die from a crit, you're probably going to die from normal damage too, because <laughs> you're not that strong early. And also your defenses are kind of boosted at early levels, so it's not as big a deal. And very last for leveling this is going to be the jewel sockets and the iron will over here with constitution. If you're really suffering, you can pick up constitution over here. That works well. But generally, Iron Will you want to leave to later, just because you're not going to have a lot of strength for quite a bit of time. And the Jewel Sockets are only for Forbidden Flesh and Flame currently. There's not really many other good options. Technically, you could get random splinters, but those are going to be really stupid expensive, so I wouldn't recommend it. So that is the main leveling for the build. So going over to the skills now, we are going to be doing a 5 link. Uh, with uh, Golem of, safe of Safeguarding, which takes some of the melee damage you would take from its own health instead. It's just a Catherine Stun, Stone Golem with Meat Shield generally. Those are the most three important gems, so if you can only get a three link staff to start with, that's fine. You don't need to have anything better than that, but you can also pick up Minion Life and Fortify when you have more links on your staff. And then separate from that, um, like a one link on the staff is just your guard skill. We have our auras. So we have Herald of Ash and Herald of Purity. They give a surprising amount of damage for their reservation costs, which is really nice. We also have picked up Determination so that we have some nice chunky physical damage reduction and Defiance Banner for more physical damage reduction, more evasion. Uh, Enlightened Ear, just as a you can swap it on if like you need to swap one of these out so you can actually fit your auras in it's not intended to be used here it's just for research and testing then we have our flame totem here holy flame totem with multiple totem support just so you have extra totems so he brings you up to five with pursuit of faith from higher font and ancestral bond we have inspiration because that does lots of elemental damage and crit and also just decreases the cost of our very expensive totems Combustion, which makes it so that you deal more damage. Faster casting, because totems love casting speed and fire penetration. Then for gloves, we have our travel skills, as well as righteous fire, just uh, whenever we want to use it for bossing. You just pop it on, gives us an extra 500,000 DPS. There is nothing in our boots right now because of our warden ascendancy, which I'll go over in a moment. And we have flammability here in our profane proxy. So going over Ascendancies, I'll start with the Warden, just because I just mentioned it. 
So we're gonna be taking Oath of the Mad Diver as the very first thing. Uh, we're since we have no socketed gems in our boots, we'll get an extra 30% movement speed, which is gonna be real useful. So we can pick that up. Technically, you could also swap out. You could swap some stuff into your um, staff and then take out jewels in either your gloves or helmet if you really want to get other stats. But we're not doing that currently. We have Detect Evil here, just because I'm interested in trying it. And we have Tinctures here. Since we have Battle Mage, Tinctures should still be helpful to us. We will see how effective they are, but this is what I want to try out for now. So we'll go over the items for this build right now. We have Martyr of Innocence, which I honestly find to be fairly reasonable to get. Uh, since you only really need a 4-socket 3-link Martyr to start with, and the other two links are unnecessary unless you just need a little bit of extra protection for your golem you're gonna be fine just picking up a rather cheap martyr on like the the first or second day usually it's gonna be 10 or 15 chaos in my experiences we have eye of malice here for fire and cold exposure mainly fire exposure uh, nearby enemies have increased resistance which also increases negative resistance which will give us a chance to uh, do a lot of uh, extra damage with all of our penetration and exposure and such. We have Lionized Vision as our chest plate. This can very easily be swapped out for a rare chest plate. This is not required. It will give you extra damage because of the pierce support, but it is not required until you are ready for it. We have Malagaro's Veracity, which is a quite an important thing. It gives you a bunch of crit multi, so we don't have to actually build the crit multi and helps with our crit chance. It gives us more decks, so we need that badly. Uh, you will be able to get a number of different, different corrupt implicits. We can go over those at another point when uh, we're actually farther in the build. Then the boots. You just need simple resistance boots. The implicits from Eater of Worlds and Searing Exarch are good, but only make up a combined 4% of your damage, so they're, they're trivial. We have Zoth's Heart here. I picked up Disciple of Slaughter, which gives you the ability to generate Frenzy Charges, because that's useful. Uh, we have this for Cover and Ash, mainly. Then we have our Profane Proxy, covering our chilling Skitter bots with Flammability and using Shocking for damage. Basic Attribute and Life Ring. And we have the Magnite for triple damage. Double and triple damage. It'll also give us a lot of extra Flash Charges gained. For our, all of our Flasks, we're using Bottomless which gives more charge recovery. And in addition with the uh, flash charges gained on uh, the Magnate, it brings us up to 110% plus charge gain modifier, which is really, really good. So they'll come up fast. Granite with cast speed on it, silver with armor on it. A lot of people would do granite with armor and silver with cast speed, but I swap them so that if one's up but the other isn't, you always have a little bit of, of both of them. Enduring Flask, Basic, Corrupted Blood. Uh, we might not need the Corrupted Blood. We will see. That might be better as Poison, just because we have a lot of physical damage reduction, a uh, number of which is from Endurance Charges, so it will cover Bleeding. And then we have our Tension Slot. We also have Forbidden Flesh and Flame with Augury of Penitence, and that will bring us over to our Ascendancy. So Augury of Penitence is just over here in the Inquisitor line. Just less elemental damage taken, more elemental damage dealt. Pretty simple, and it's also one of the cheaper, decent Forbidden Flesh and Flames you'll find for the, the Templar. For here, we have taken Arcane Blessing for Arcane Surge. We have Conviction of Power for Endurance and Power Charges. We have Pursuit of Faith for Summon Totems. And we have Ritual Awakening for Totem Damage. So your order for this, for Ascending, will be your first Ascendancy will be Arcane Blessing because it gives the most damage. Even if you are technically using a different scale just to level up, that will also be pretty good if it's a spell totem. Pursuit of Faith is next to get the next maximum totems. I've been debating whether to go Power of Conviction or Ritual of Awakening next, but I'm setting on, on Conviction of Power because Conviction of Power gives endurance charges, which mean that you are going to have a bunch of physical damage reduction that also works when you are dealing with the Labyrinth Traps, and a lot of people are going to be running Labyrinth stuff this league. So this is mainly to protect us when we do the Uber Lab, 
so that we can actually get through them without getting just shredded by traps. And then Ritual Awakening is damage, mana regen, life regen. Uh, you can take Ritual Awakening as your third if you think you'll be fine with the traps and you need you are having mana problems. That's totally reasonable. And that's the Ascendancy. So in general, this does 2.5 million DPS. It's decent for a League starter. It's got a decent block chance, so it'll be fairly easy to activate the 15% fire pen if you've blocked recently on the Mart of Innocence. So if you have that activated, it gives an extra 200,000 DPS, which is really nice. We also have our uh, golem that will have meat shield and will be near, near us. So it will be taking damage for us to protect us and protected from a lot of its own damage it's taking. And that is most of the build. It's pretty effective. We're sitting at 2,500 totem life, which is very, very good. 2,400 armor for the totems, perfect. These totems won't die easily at all. They are really strong. Plus, we're going to have extra damage from the uh, pierce support. Decent crit chance, decent crit multi, and we will have curse immunity from our consecrated ground that we get from our holy flame totems too, which is going to be really nice. Plus also a big chunk of life regen. You can see on the left right here, our consecrated ground gives us 240 life regen per second, which is really, really nice. I have been considering swapping out the augury penitence here for pious path, which means that consecrated grounds effects linger as well as you get ES regen. That means the damage effects will will linger on enemies and the benefits will linger on you. So you are more likely to always be curse immune with pious path. I haven't really invested in energy shield though, so it feels kind of stupid to have double the ES recovery a second that you have actual energy shield. So not sure about that. For those who are on YouTube watching this little build guide, Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and ring the bell for more content. Also, if you want to leave any posts in the comments or comment in the stream about any future videos you'd like to see, feel free. I'd love to have more ideas.